1 Corinthians, Paul writes, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. In the same way, although our ministry has many parts, many communities, and many people, we hold a common vision that is, people with exceptional needs belong to communities in which their God-given gifts are valued and respected. Over this past year, we've worked together with people receiving services, our many employees, both here in Canada and around the world, and our partners, working together toward our vision, which is building communities of belonging. The following stories represent some of the accomplishments of our Onward Strategic Plan in 2015-16. Nelson Mandela once said that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more great hills to climb. We've all faced hills or milestones that we've sought to accomplish. This story is about Helen and the men and women that she lives with. Helen climbed the mountain and she likes the view. It became apparent a number of years ago that people supported were no longer satisfied with living in the group home. We knew we had to do something different. Helen had, has obviously always talked about having her own apartment. She would often talk about having people come over for tea or coffee, and so you really knew that she wanted to have her own apartment. Did you like living at Hergott? We like fun at there. Historically, somebody might in a cell receive a couple of hours of support a week, and in this program, people are receiving quite a bit of support. We didn't have extra resources that we could use to be able to make this happen, um, and we had to be really intentional about what that staffing could look like. The staff that are here now are the same staff that were at Hergott, and the people we are supporting are the same people. But the attitude and the group dynamics have changed. I'm just finding that the people are becoming more independent. It's nice to see the staff is finally starting to back off and allow the people to um, do for themselves instead of always doing for. A lot of people will ask me, well, why didn't you put the two men with the two men and the two women with the two women? And um, John, you know, if he, if he could say and, and advocate for himself with words, he would say he would want to live with Anne. Do you like living with Anne? And so we were able to hear him through his actions and through his behavior and, um, and honor that, uh, which was really important. This is their place. They're taking pride in their home and they're able to invite people over. And they're choosing more activities. They're interacting with uh, people in their communities of belonging and developing their own friendships and relationships and they're not dependent on uh, the direct support professionals. Mark, Mark, uh, the transition for him, we were worried about the most because of his need for, for routine. And um, he's the one that surprised us the most. He's probably the one that settled in the fastest. It's been really good for him. And Helen, Helen is the one that kind of wanted all of this in the beginning and um, and she's growing leaps and bounds. I just, I can't say enough. At the same time, it's that in, increase of independence is challenging for the staff. This gives people an opportunity to have a voice, to be able to be their best self, and to be able to live the life that they want to live. We've had our challenges, but I wouldn't change it for, for anything. It's been the best for the people supported. Will it be better uh, as the days go by? Absolutely. Around the world, Christian Horizons is committed to offering opportunities that equip people with exceptional needs with the skills and resources to more fully belong. Uh, one way that we do that is through our special needs education program. In El Moro, Guatemala, we partner with the uh, government. So it's a government-run school, but there's uh, many students in the school that are sponsored, and as a result, their school fees are paid through that. When I visited there last year, I, I met a little girl named Maria. She's one of about a half dozen kids in the school with a developmental disability. Were it not for the broad support, the government support, the sponsor support, Maria wouldn't have a place. She wouldn't be able to go because it would be too costly for one particular student with her needs. Thanks to this new special needs classroom and teacher, we are not going to tell parents that the children are not allowed to register for school. I was not expecting a call to inform me that I could bring my child to attend school. God bless you. I thank God and Christian Horizons for the opportunity to have a special education teacher. And now we've been able to replicate that in two other schools in Guatemala where children with special needs are able to be part of a fully integrated classroom learn amongst their peers. Disabilities should not exclude anyone from receiving education. 
I am very thankful for this space, for the teacher, for the wheelchair, and for the therapy provided for my son. My vision is that these children are included in the society and can contribute to our community of El Morro and our country. It creates a new outlet into the community more broadly because now Maria would have been somebody who was sheltered in her home, but because of school, it gives the family an outlet and gives her confidence to be able to say, no, I can go and I can be myself. The school benefits from her presence, the whole community benefits from her presence. We wouldn't be able to do that were it not for our donors. And while we've been able to have these classrooms built, there's still a need for ongoing support. So we're grateful for the continued support that people offer to be able to let programs like this continue to exist for children like Maria. One of our commitments to employees is to be considered for promotional opportunities. We've interpreted that to mean that we will provide leadership development opportunities to our employees. So this year, Christian Horizons developed and launched the first Leadership Assessment Center in the developmental services sector. During the Leadership Assessment Center, participants experience a number of simulations where the assessors observe their strengths relating to core competencies and then provide them with timely feedback and recommendations for development. The participants leave the week with executive level learning along with a personalized report that can help them build their skill set to the next level. This week at the Leadership Assessment Center, we've had the opportunity to bring together leaders from within Christian Horizons and also leaders from across the province from a variety of different agencies and organizations in developmental services. I'm really impressed by the presenters and their ability to uh, engage all of the uh, participants. They really encourage creativity and uh, opportunities to learn in, in uh, different ways. And just being able to brainstorm and have fun and uh, learn at the same time, it's been a great opportunity. I'm very thankful for the opportunity that we've had here and uh, I think it really speaks to the value that Christian Horizons places on uh, their employees and their development. It gives you a great snapshot of where you are with your, with your leadership in a lot of different domains. And I really like that it's related to the core competencies so that I can go back and I can uh, really make it relevant to the work that I'm doing for Christian Horizons and make it really um, work for me as I lead my teams and I make a difference in the lives of people. So it's really actually exciting. It's been great. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect coming in. Uh, what intrigued me was the opportunity for assessment and feedback. Uh, and, and again, I didn't know what that was going to look like, but uh, it certainly exceeded my expectations so far. It's been great. I just wanted to say this was a great week. A uh, wonderful learning opportunity to understand how assessment centers work and the value they bring to developing our future leaders in the DS sector. This has been an amazing week and a lot of intense work. This is going to shape our leaders and help not just the leaders of Christian Horizons, but the leadership of developmental services. Partnership is an essential aspect of helping to create communities of belonging. At our Jubilee celebration in December 2015, 24 partners across the organization were awarded the Christian Horizons Partners in Excellence Award. This recognizes their significant contribution in creating communities of belonging. The following story highlights one partner whose relationship with two people we support have helped them to develop skills and become more comfortable in the community. The first time that I met the group from Christian Horizons, we were just taking a walk in the park. We saw Gerald sitting on top of a picnic table and he saw the dogs and he was waving his arms. And at first I thought he wanted us to come over, but as I got closer, I realized he was frightened. I said, these dogs are therapy dogs. They would not hurt anybody. Then Paul Berkey started to get interested and he said, well, you know, would you come and visit us? And she has faithfully come and, and visited with uh, all of us here. Originally, Gerald was terrified of dogs. I would hold the dog's head and he would just touch the back and then we would tell him how brave he was because he was overcoming a real fear. And uh, then gradually he got so he could pet her, but for, for years he asked me, 
does it bite? I'd say, no, she would never bite you. And then he doesn't ask anymore. And Gerald has uh, reduced his timidity of dogs to the point where he's able to get out into the community more. Gerald, are you afraid of dogs now? Or no? <laughs> <laughs> I really would miss everybody if, if I weren't coming. And so every dog I've had has uh, been introduced here. And they enjoy it, I enjoy it, and uh, the people are wonderful. Nancy has dedicated her uh, time for years to come here, and she's been a great volunteer for all of us. They gave me and, and Casey an award. It made me feel so honored and so humble at the same time, really. I mean, I felt proud, but I, I felt as if I didn't really deserve it. But, you know, they were just, they've been so amazing to me, so uh, wonderful. It's a wonderful place. I mean, the residents here, some of them I know where they were previously and they would not have been cherished in the same way, I regret to say, as they are here. So they've blossomed here and uh, I see it every time I come. So I, you know, can't say enough about it. The stories we've seen are just a sample of the stories happening across the organization. Collectively, the people connected with Christian Horizons, people supported, employees, volunteers, partners, we're all engaged in our vision to see people with exceptional needs belong to communities in which their God-given gifts are valued and respected. These are more than just words on a page. Their lives being impacted and people with stories to tell.